3910 to learn more. That's CREON.com. On Wall Street, after a big one day rebound, a return to selling the Dow is down 449 points, wiping out all of yesterday's gains. The Nasdaq's falling 205, the SP 500 is losing 66 points, while the price of oil rises more than a dollar, back over 113 bucks a barrel, while uh, for a ninth day in a row, gas is at an all time high price. Gasoline prices rose four more cents yesterday, pushing the national average for regular to a record 456 a gallon, according According to AAA, in California, you might need to get a second job to keep filling your tank. The state average hit 605, also a record and the most expensive in the country. Another first for prices at the pump. Drivers in all 50 states are paying an average of at least four dollars a gallon. Carmen Roberts. Fox News. Women's soccer fans will get a kick out of this. A landmark collective bargaining agreement for the United States national senior soccer teams ensures equal pay for the men's and women's teams through 2028. The U.S. Soccer Federation has new CBAs with the men's and women's teams already approved by the Federation's Board of Governors. Prize money earned by the men's and women's soccer teams at the World Cup will get combined and split between the teams. The U.S. the first nation to level the paying field. A member of the U.S. men's team and soccer union negotiating team, Walker Zimmerman stated, they said equal pay for men and women was not possible, but that did not stop us, and we went ahead and achieved it. FIFA, the world governing body of soccer, does not offer equal prize money. The United States men's team cooperated with the women's team and the U.S. Soccer Federation to bring this equality. Jared Max, Fox News. In the NBA playoffs, Butler the drive across the lane, kicks it back out, Struess long three-pointer, it's good! The Miami Heat beat the Boston Celtics 118-107 to on ESPN in the opening game of the Eastern Conference Finals. Game one of the West is tonight. I'm Dave Anthony. This is Fox News. In WPTV's first alert weather on WSTU is brought to you by Sailfish Roofing, offering excellence, honesty, and integrity in everything they do. Sailfish Roofing, 772-263-ROOF. Community roofing company you can trust. Sailfish Roofing. Now, here's WPTV's first alert meteorologist. Your WPTV first alert forecast. This afternoon, highs in the upper 80s to low 90s were sunny with some isolated inland showers and storms. Tomorrow, a similar weather day, hot and humid for the afternoon hours with highs reaching the low 90s. And another round of some isolated inland showers and storms, but we're mainly dry at the coast. Friday, highs in the upper 80s and scattered afternoon to evening showers and storms, keeping it unsettled for the weekend with highs in the mid to upper 80s. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall for WSTU 1450, Martin County's Heritage station you are listening to wstu stewart jensen beach hope sound martin county's heritage station it's time now for the casey ingram show on wstu the opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of wstu wstu does not endorse products that may be mentioned any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of wstu it's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788 220-wstu and now here's casey ingram good morning and welcome back to Another beautiful Wednesday here on the Treasure Coast and uh, another great sunny day, even though we're heading into uh, uh, the rainy season and hurricane season. And I, I do want to remind everybody with a uh, hurricane season that make sure that, uh, pulling a fast one on Iggy here, I, <laughs> I got to talk a little bit about Indian Town Marina. Hurricane season, it's time really to reserve your place so you have a safe place to store your boat in case there's a hurricane. Indian Town Marina is located inland off the Okeechobee Waterway and honestly, in my opinion, it's probably one of the safest places you can keep your boat and the good folks out there, uh, they're ready to take your reservations now and honestly, I can tell you from experience, once a hurricane is named, the chances of getting a spot and safe harborage for your boat is, is very slim. So have peace of mind. You can visit IndianTownMarina.com and uh, give them a call. Make sure you have a good, safe place. And hopefully we don't have hurricanes, but if we do, that's the place to go. In the studio today, we have a couple good shows on tap. Uh, for the first half hour, I'm, I'm very excited. I have a first-time guest, but a, a good friend, uh, James Campo. And uh, James, you came in today. Uh, you're wearing your certified financial 
planner hat, but uh, let me tell the folks a little bit more about you. I know uh, a lot of folks know you here around town and a lot of the good work that you've done. Uh, James Campo is president of Campo Financial Services and a lifelong resident of Martin County. James launched Campo Insurance mm-hmm. Agency in 1983. The firm is based in Sewell's Point, offers personal and commercial insurance and investment services. James graduated from Florida Atlantic University where he received his Bachelor of Arts degree in political science with an emphasis in taxation and economics. Postgraduate, James completed his certified financial planner coursework at the Florida Institute of Technology. He holds FINRA securities, registration 7, 6, and 63, and is licensed for property and casualty insurance, 220, and life and health insurance, 218. As are those dates or are those regulations? Those are the names of the licenses. There we go. Okay. Glad I said them then. Uh, James is a registered representative and an investment advisor representative affiliated with Satera. Advisors, did I pronounce that right? Yes. Broker dealer. As an active leader on the Treasure Coast, James has served as president of the following organizations. And this is going to take me a couple minutes because there's a lot. <laughs> uh, Treasure Coast Planning or Planned Giving Council, the Martin County Young Republicans, the Martin County Exchange Club, the Independent Agent Association, the Treasure Coast Association of Fundraising Professionals, and as chairman of the Redeemer Lutheran School Board. He was honored with an award from, from Northwood University for promotion and philanthropy in 2005. The Florida Association of Public Relations crowned him with their Communicator of the Year Award. In 2014, he chose to serve as community and was elected to the Sewell's Point Town Commission. Since then, he served as the town's vice mayor and mayor and was reelected in 2018. In 2016, he was elected countywide as the Republican Party's state committee man with over 72, that's a, a large percentage, 72% of the vote. James currently serves as the Congressional District 18 chairman and is on the executive board of the Republican Party of Florida and was selected to be a delegate to the 2020 Republican National Convention. Then Governor Rick Scott appointed James to the Martin County Children's Service Council in 2018, where he currently serves as vice chairman. He also serves on the Martin County MPO, the Transportation Board, and uh, personally, you have five children and live in Sewell Point. Sewell's Point. So you have a lot of ties here to the community. But today we're, again, wearing the Certified Financial Planner hat. Uh, there's so much going on right now in the world and in our economy with inflation and prices are rising everywhere. And, and folks, um, you're more than welcome. I'm, I'm <coughs> watching Facebook uh, so I can take questions and comments through Facebook or call into the studio 220-WSTU. That's 772-220-9788. But please know that uh, James can't talk about any personal issues. So it's got to be a broad question uh, if you do have a, um, a topic or a question for James. So James, well, Welcome. Thank, you, thank you for having me, Casey, and thank you for Iggy and Evan here in the studio. I'm looking forward to speaking to uh, the residents of Stewart and uh, Port St. Lucie. It's been a tough time to be an investor. Yes. It's been a tough time if you're investing in bonds, in stocks, um, in cryptocurrencies. It's, it's just been a, a brutal. Uh, I think all of those classifications we would consider to be a, a bear market. So if people are looking at their April statements, they're probably got a lot of concerns. Right, right, right now uh, with the stock market, it seems like every day, uh, it, a few times it's green, but for the most part it ends red and we've been seeing it decline, decline, decline in all those different areas. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's a worrisome time right now. Uh, where do you think everything cycles? There's ups and downs through the economy throughout years. <clears throat> um, this one, I think, with record high inflation, I and mean, we we have not seen this type of inflation for decades. Where do you think we are in the cycle right now, James? And what can people do um, to safeguard their savings? Well, great questions, great questions. You know, this interest rate environment has been really pumping a lot of liquidity into the system, and has been, I think, artificially keeping interest rates low, which has really been to the detriment of savers that have used CDs as a traditional investment because CDs uh, have been so abysmal in their return. A lot of those folks have taken on much too much risk and are in the stock market and probably are in for a shock when they look at uh, what's happening. Now that the Federal Reserve has announced not just the interest rates that they've already um, implemented, but that they're heading in that direction. I think that this has been a, a game changer and that we're probably in the fourth or fifth inning of what's happening in the economy, which has been reflected in what the stock market has been doing. 
the stock market is a forward indicator. So the stock market already knows that there's going to be uh, tough times ahead. So it's time for people to get hold of what they can control because there's so many things that are beyond our control. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. What can a person looking at their April statement do to control their own circumstances? Very important indeed, and I think that's what everybody's main concern is. Uh, many of us, you know, 2008 is, is still fresh in our memories, and uh, that the stock market, obviously, the economy, everything really tanked then as well. And uh, it's a little frightening. I know a lot of people lost their retirements then, you know, their savings, because a lot of that was invested through the stock market. So, you know, you mentioned they're looking at their April statements. What what can people do now? Well, I don't think this is 2008. I think this is a, a lot more um, um, predictable because of the the impetus of what's going to cause the portfolios to go down. Uh, interest rates rising, there's a lot of data on the effect of portfolios, the, por the effect of different asset classes. So I don't think we're in a um, you know, the great recession or a, a doomsday situation. I just think that people really need to get a hold of their own personal risk profiles and they need to get a hold of their own emotions and turn mm -hmm. off turn off CNBC. Is it, or CNBC a sponsor, Evan? <laughs> <laughs> nope, we okay. can say that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, the first thing and the most important thing with investing is to, to know yourself, as Shakespeare said, you know, to, to know what your reaction is going to be when you see a portfolio that's gone down by tens of thousands or, or, or even $100,000. And if that's not a situation you're comfortable in, you need to get a hold of your own emotions, get with your significant other, and just get a good handle on not reacting in a sense of panic. The first thing people need to do is get a hold of their own emotions and don't turn into panic. That's very important. You have your business here in town. If a customer comes in and says, James, I need your help. I, I thought I was set up for retirement. I'm five years away, and right now with the stock market, my, you know, my, as you just said, CDs and bonds, the interest rate is so low, they don't have their money there. Um, wh what should I do at this juncture? What, walk a new customer through the process if they come in and say, ah, well, I think you're walking right into it. I, I've, I've, I've always been the believer that you need a, an expert. You need a consultant. You need someone that knows your situation. So the first thing that I would do is is to advise people to have a consultant. Now, it could be a certified financial planner, which is you know my background. But even if it's a child of theirs that's got a good economic background uh, or a trusted advisor, um, they they need to uh, seek out financial advice and you know I always say I'm not in the investment business I'm in the advice business and my phone's been ringing off the hook because people need advice again last year the last couple of years you know anybody throwing a dart on a dartboard can get a double digit increase so the first thing that I would tell people to do is to consult with an expert um, Another thing to remember is to look at the United States uh, history. You know, we've gone through wars, we've gone through depressions, we've gone through 9-11. Uh, our system of free enterprise has always survived and thrived. So you have to look at the past and have some um, faith in what has been, I think, uh, an exceptional um, experiment in, 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 in the world economy, and that's the American uh, stock market. Not to say that it's perfect, not to say that Wall Street hasn't disappointed us, uh, but if you look at the past and you take a hold of your emotions and you have an expert, you've got a good start. Very, very important. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, you said looking at the past, and I mentioned cycles. What's a typical financial cycle? I mean, it, it, they, it goes up and down all the time. Is there typically every eight years you're going to see it fluctuate up or down? Is it every 30 years? Well, typically, uh, I would say that the stock market over any 10-year rolling period, over any 10-year rolling period, if you can stay for 10 years, the stock market has always been break-even or positive. So age matters. Age matters so much. 
Um, unfortunately, some, there's been some senior citizens who have been chased out of CDs into the stock market, and that's an area of concern. So the rule of thumb is if you've got the 10 years, then you have the wherewithal to ride out the storm of a market bottom. Um, beyond that, you know, you need to look at uh, another thing that you can control, and that's your expenses. No one can, tr can control what the Federal Reserve is going to do, what Joe Biden's going to do. In fact, uh, last week when the Federal Reserve increased interest rates by a half a point, which was a, a, a huge increase, the stock market actually went up that day. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to figure out uh, what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. It is very difficult, and we anticipate there'll be more interest rates here in the future as well. Um, and as you said, they have been artificially low for years, so this is almost a correction at this juncture. But at the same point, that's going to help with CDs and bonds, don't you think, here, you know, that their, their rates will also go up? You know, I'm surprised that that hasn't happened already. Um, it, it should happen, but in reality, it hasn't taken hold yet, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. But the interest rate increases that have already taken place have already had an effect on the economy. Uh, this morning, housing starts and um, mortgage applications down 11 percent. That's going to be a huge ripple effect because that is also a leading indicator. Is that down 11 percent from last month or a year ago? A year ago. A year ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the interest rate increases have already uh, been absorbed into the economy. And so that is going to work through uh, earn, corporate earnings and spending because um, housing is a big driver. And that's a really an interesting one as well because all of us have noticed, of course, how much uh, housing values have skyrocketed. And now with interest rates going up, it's going to be less affordable to the average person to even buy a house. Um, and that, that's always something that goes hand in hand. So um, I don't know. Do you think that it, it means that the – Housing market's going to also uh, decrease with values now, or is it stabilized? South Florida is kind of its own animal, in my opinion, because we have so many people moving here. I don't know that we can compare this nationally. Right. Well, I think the froth is coming off of, of the uh, cappuccino, if you want to say, uh, on the home prices. I don't think you're going to see any immediate reductions. The realtors that I'm talking to are looking forward to, hopefully, more inventory. The building industry does have more inventory that's in the pipeline. So I think you're going to see more product come on the market. Look at the city of Stewart. I mean, there's a lot of apartments that have been recently completed. So uh, there are some things to look forward to, but I wouldn't think that that's going to be anything uh, anytime soon. Let's go back and talk about uh, the financial planning aspect of, of your business. And let's talk about people that are maybe in their 30s and 40s. They have a good part of their working career. And then we'll go a little bit further to people in their 50s and 60s that are at the end of their working career. So starting with the younger people, where can they put their money right now and get the best return? And when I say best return, what kind of returns are we looking at? Well, you know, I hate to generalize. And that's why, you know, when we first spoke, I am hesitant. Uh, I mean, I could talk about some general rules of thumb, but at the end of the day, every person has their own individual, what we call risk profile. And you could be uh, the uh, dictionary definition of, uh, you know, a young gun who has got plenty of time uh, in the market to ride out the ups and downs. But if, if you lose sleep when you get your statement, then you have no b business being in the stock market. I, I laugh because the, the young men, and I consider myself one, uh, are typically uh, the most aggressive, but uh, in my history, they're the first ones to call me, you know, when right. the stock market goes down, right. you know. Right. Uh, women, I think, seem to be more in touch with reality and uh, might temper some of their initial asset allocation and react accordingly. So, you know, I'm a big fan of women. <laughs> <laughs> as, as clients, they seem to be more even keeled. I couldn't agree more, yeah. James. <laughs> yes. And, you know, my hat's off to you. Um, but, you know, typically, you know, uh, if you have the time to ride out the storm and your money is set uh, for retirement and you have uh, good, you know, good cash flow, 
you're meeting your expenses, you don't have a lot of debt, typically you're the risk profile to be more aggressive and to be more heavily in the stock market. Um, if you take, you know, maybe the number 80 and uh, subtract your age, that might be, you know, um, I'm sorry, if you were to take the, the number 100 and subtract your age, that's a, about how much you should have in the stock market for retirement. So if you're a, you know, a 30 year old, you should probably have, uh, you know, typically 70 percent in the stock market. And, you know, real estate investment trusts are um, also a separate asset class. So, you know, for a 30 year old, I might say 70 percent in the stock market, 15 percent in real estate investment trusts and 15 percent in, in the bond market. OK, that's a really uh, a good overview of where some different places to put your money is. What about right now for um, people closer to retirement? Are CDs, I know <coughs> personally, you know, CDs are great. They're safe, but it also can tie your money up. And there's, there's caveats that you may not be able to get your money out for five years without penalties and whatnot, and the interest rates are low. So are those a good place to put your money? You know, as you get closer to retirement, if you're in the withdrawal stage, excuse me, of retirement, it's really hard to give general um, advice. And that's one of the problems that I have with, you know, CNBC. I, I call some of those uh, types of, of um, media uh, financial pornography because people look at it and they, it, they just get emotionally distraught or, you know, the greed takes over, um, the excitement on the way up or the fear and panic on the way down. So I, I hate to give general advice for people in, in the, the older ages. Okay. When you are uh, in the younger, you have a lot of time to make up for mistakes. Um, but what you do have to do is, is, is uh, take a look at the aspects of what you can control. And I'd like to talk about that. I don't know. I know we've got a break coming up soon. But I'd like to talk about the biggest uh, impact on your investments it, that you can control is managing expenses. It's very important, and let's go ahead and do that because we got about five minutes left. So I want to make sure that we hit this topic. Okay. So um, no one can control the Federal Reserve. No one can control corporations. No one can control debt. Um, when you look at your portfolio, um, there's typically expenses that are associated with that. There's expenses for an advisor. There's expenses for the brokerage firm, and there's expenses for the underlying investments. So I, you know, s some of the business that I do is help people with insurance. I have staff for that because it's, it's like pulling your hair out these days. So I, hats off to my staff. <laughs> um, but it's funny how uh, uh, someone will quote their home insurance every single year, but they won't quote the cost to manage their investments. And many people don't even know what they're paying to have their investments managed. That's a really good point, as a matter of fact. And you mentioned home insurance. That's really a big issue right now in Florida. There's a lot of people that are being canceled uh, right ahead of hurricane season, and rates have skyrocketed. Right, so I right. Think. So I think, you know, if you have, uh, you, know, you know, typically a, a million-dollar portfolio, you know, if, that, if that's a 1% fee, all in for all the different facets you know that would be maybe a standard okay but it's still i'm still amazed as to how few people really know what they're paying and with some firms that use their own proprietary funds they are double dipping their their advisor could be getting a fee and then they use uh, fees of their own and uh, there's maybe a brokerage fee. So what I would encourage your listeners and viewers to do is to have a candid conversation and demand transparency. If you are in an investment where the advisor is saying is there is no fee, there's, a, there's trouble because that means that the fee is buried. And if there's a long um, holding period or a lock-in, that typically means that there is a fee that's being charged internally and you need to know what that fee is. Uh, as an example, annuities sometimes bring with them fees of up to 3%, sometimes more than 3%. Okay. 
So I would just, uh, there, there's no, in my opinion, there's no good or bad single products in and of themselves. It's just a matter of if they're suitable. So there are advantages and disadvantages to all investments. Um, so finding out what the benefits are is um, important, but you need to know what you're paying for those fees. And the first step is asking your advisor point blank what fees that you're paying and to have them broken out and to understand how those fees are charged against your account balance. I think that's a really good point is ask them to break them out. Um, if they can't provide that to you, that's certainly going to be an issue. That's a, a red flag, right? Right. I mean, I, I love the transparency of buying a gallon of gas. You know, right. you, can, you could look at any corner and know it's 87 octane, it's unleaded fuel, and it's about the same. We don't have that in some parts of our economy, and not to, not to chase a rabbit, but it's part of the problem, I think, in the healthcare field. No right. one knows what they're paying. Right, 100%. I, I remember when we had our first child, I asked the OBGYN, how much does this cost? And no one can tell me wow. what the cost of the health care was. Wow. So transparency in the investment field um, is possible, but you've just got to ask for it. So folks, we've been speaking with James Campo. He's a certified financial planner, and he has been here in the area doing this for just about 40 years now. So uh, James, we're closing out our half hour. It's been wonderful to have you in the studio. But before you go, can you give us some contact information for anybody that may want to reach out to you? Sure. I'm, uh, I'm glad time flies. Wow. It does. Um, James at Campo, C-A-M-P-O Financial is my uh, email address. And my website is campofinancial.com. I really appreciate your time and the service that you give to our community, Casey. James Campo, absolutely my pleasure. And it's been fun to have you here. And we'll have to have you back and hear about the exciting things in Souls Point as well. So you yes. do a lot of work here yes. in the community yes. and wear a lot of hats. We'll be right back with Marilyn, Marilyn Maker. Forbearances.